Hi, thank you for joining me on the Albion Yard YouTube channel and in this presentation we're going to look at this British Railways Standard Class 5 from Backman. The tender and the modifications we're going to do to that to make it into a tender appropriate for this locomotive. It's going to be a early locomotive, so one of the first 49. With that, the locomotive was supplied with this tender which represents a 1G. Now, to remove this from a 1G to an early 1 tender, we need to reduce this height of this water dome here. And these panels here at the front, which you can see the handrails fitted to, those aren't on a BR1 tender either. Apart from that, the rest of the model is good. You can see I've already worked out how we can do the removal of this um, factory weathering. We'll take a look at that when we come to the paint section. The other thing I'm going to do is to reduce the length of these buffers on the tender here. And I'll just see if I can zoom into those a little bit better. There we are, because we're going to be close coupling the tender, the buffers here may well then foul the locomotive, so we'll shorten those. The coupling on the locomotive then is this very simple bar. It's got two positions, one for a close coupling, which you can see here where my finger is, and one for further out, and those will work with your set track points. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using a minimum of Pico um, medium radius points. So we should be able to make this work a lot closer. That's how the locomotive looks when it's coupled on the close coupling setting. And you can see the steps on the tender don't align with the cab door. Now that's the big thing that I want to change. And if I can just hold this in the sort of position that I want it. That's the sort of alignment I want. And that's the thing that cutting, cutting the front of these buffers off and shortening this connection here will do. Next stage then is to remove the coupling bar from the locomotive. It's a relatively simple and straightforward procedure. Underneath the locomotive, we have the brake pull rods. These are plastic mouldings. There is a screw here holding the crosshead screw here, holding the keeper plate on. And I can just see underneath this brake um, master cylinder here, I think it is, you can just see there's another crosshead screw in the center in here. That needs to come out and then the base plate will lift up and we can get that out. So first thing then is to remove the brake gear. It's relatively soft plastic but there are quite fine details. You can just see the pins on the end of these um, brake crossbars just here. Uh, just make sure that you don't break those. Now that leaves us with the centre section here. And I think if I tweak that, that's going to come out without a problem. It has. So put that to one side. That allows us clear access to the crosshead screws. So again, using good quality tools, can't emphasize that enough. Um, they will significantly reduce the chance of any damage to any part of a model using good quality screws, good quality um, screwdrivers and tooling generally. And don't drop them. So that one's almost undone. This I can hear clicking, so that looks like it's turning. The foam here is a old school Pico locomotive servicing module or foam section rather and that's all this coupling is so I'm going to do the screws back up in a second 
Um, so that's going to be very easy to replicate either with plastic or from a piece of brass and make it shorter by very simply re-drilling this hole a little bit closer in and that will give us the locomotive and tender close coupling. So do the screws up. Again, gently put these back in place. Our master cylinder, as I'm calling it, I'm not quite sure what the real name is. Um, that needs to go back. There is a hole on this part here. Just hopefully we can see it there, that hole there. That needs to be facing downwards. And that will allow you then to put your brake rigging back in place. And there we have the brake rigging back in place. So what does that do for the appearance of the locomotive? Well, let's get it on a piece of level track and uh, put it together and find out. Just a very quick look at the moment. You can see pushing these to the closest join I can get, and that will be too close for my track. You can see that's tightened up that gap significantly. Looks a lot, lot better. So let's put it on a piece of track and see what it looks like. Here's the slot where that connecting bar or coupling bar rather came out. Details on the rear of the cab are correct for the first 49 locomotives. We've got this rear steel plate, rear handrail and cab doors. Now with the later tenders the cab doors actually went on to the front of the tender where we took those two panels out. So just popping this very simply on a piece of track here, pushing them together, it already gives a much better look from, if you like, the typical helicopter shot we used to see in all those magazines so many years ago. And holding the locomotive and the tender together, we can see that close coupling is much much more effective now i'll probably need to put in maybe a millimeter or two so just to pull it out just a tiny bit to give me a little bit of clearance but we'll see how that goes we can make the uh, coupling bar out of a bit of plastic card so that we can try two or three different lengths to see which gives us the optimum look but i think that already looks significantly better in terms of the coupling between locomotive and tender and that's the sort of thing that i always aim and try and do not necessarily 100 percent accurate but just giving that little lift um, by doing little tweaks and adjustments can make that real significant difference to the qualities of the appearance of your models. Right then here's the tender. First thing we're going to do is try and get this dome off. I've got this set of uh, regular tweezers. I'm going to try and hold at the bottom here and see if it will come off. I'm not too bothered if I scratch the bottom here the reason why is that we're actually going to be lowering the height of this quite considerably so any damage right at the very base of it won't be a big issue so that's, oh, that's come off surprisingly easily there we go um, you can just see there's two pins holding this um, dome in place those have sheared so we've got one here that's not quite sheared and that one there has so that, that is a result. Um, very pleased with that. That's going to make 
life a lot easier with that clean brake. Okay then, um, onto the front panels here with the handrails, we'll remove those. Looking at them closely, if you look here you can see two pins here. Now this body here is obviously used by Backman to represent um, several of the tenders and the reason why this dome came off I suspect is because where you have a model that has the correct tender um, which was the problem with this one an incorrect tender for the details on the locomotive then that allows them in manufacturing to replace that with either a tall or a short dome so what we're going to do with this old dome it will be the same diameter um, there was no changes to those on the prototype all we're going to do is to reduce the height of that and then glue it back on and that should be roughly the same height as this tender filler according to the drawings in uh, OPC British Railways standard steam locomotives which has some very good GAs and diagrams and photographs. So next step then is going to be this front end here and these uh, panels. So I'm just going to run my scalpel down the front here and it's the old school thing don't go mad with it don't put too much pressure on it I'm cutting towards my finger as you can see which is probably a bad thing all the health and safety people will talk to you again on the other side of the tender just running oops this is why you should be very careful you can see I've made an error I have scratched the tender quite surprised I didn't swear there anyway um, so again just gently moving the blade down here and I'm going to see if this will come off with a little bit of working that one's reluctant to come I'll try the other side and in fact I can take the handrail off and that gives me a better purchase on this panel and that's definitely coming out you can see that now I'll just tweak that and there it's off so hopefully we can do much the same on the other side I'm just going to run the blade in the back of that panel again go around to the one where with the schoolboy error I scored into the side of the tender we will be able to sort that out when it comes to the final weathering and will this blade allow me to just get in there not really so again I'm going to see if I can get this handrail out that, again that's popped out easily so that's going to give me plenty of purchase oh that one snapped nicely brilliant so all I need to do now then is just clean the front edges of that tender where these remaining pips are here and that's pretty much our conversion done all I need to do and we'll cover this shortly in the video reduce the height of that so this is how I'm going to reduce the height of this tender dome um, some quite aggressive uh, sandpaper here to start with um, can't see the grading of it but uh, the grading of it is uh, 60 so really quite coarse um, very simply just move it backwards and forwards and we can already see that we're starting to get some removal of material and an even constant pressure across the whole of the dome because what I don't want to do is to end up with it at a with an angle on the base
so here we are we're almost done with the tender dome conversion you can see on this piece of uh, wet and dry paper here just how much material I've taken off with this dome I am going to uh, tidy this up just to give it a better seating if I put it on with my finger and hold it on we can see that we've got a significantly lower dome which is just what we need maybe need to do a little bit more work on reducing the height on that but what I want to do is to clean this first now one thing I am going to have to do with this tender is to ensure that we've got a flat base for this new revised dome height to sit on and we can see the pin here that if I don't remove that that is going to give us a problem when the um, dome is put back on it's not going to sit level so we'll remove that and make sure that the surface is flat for the dome to sit on and then refix it so removing this pin then this is the little section that we've got to remove I'm using a scalpel with a Swan and Morton number 11 blade and a new blade now if I try and get in over the top of this handrail I'm going to be digging at it and not getting a flat blade purchase what I want to do is try and skim it off so I'm actually going to put the blade underneath this handrail I could try and take the handrail off um, I'm a bloke so I'm not going to why make the job easier and that has just skimmed off that pip and I think by the time I've put the glue on then this surface here which isn't quite flat probably won't have a big effect so what I'm going to do then is to use this 1200 wet and dry paper I've got a section of plastic rod here and just hold it in place one way you can do it is to glue it so I've got a very simple sandwich there dip it in a little bit of water because we want the wet and dry paper to work and you can see the marking there where the dome was and this just smooths off that section there and it will make it a lot better when we come to fit the dome Again, not too bothered about the fact that it's taking the uh, paint off the top of the tender we can work on that when we come back to do the final weathering and that's given a much better gluing finish for this dome So here we are then I've finished all the sanding you can see that I've prepared the top of the tender that's now nice and smooth I've left the mark there enough of a mark there so that when I put the dome back on and you can see just how much thinner that dome is now to how it was when we started that it will sit flat and smooth on that surface I'm going to be using Revel contact a professional which is a regularly and easily available glue and just put a few dabs in the center there what I'm going to do is to just drop that on there and smooth it across make sure it sits in the exact position it should do so basically covering the original marking and that's it 
there we have our completed conversion on the tender. And if I just drop a piece of paper behind it, you can see now just how much flatter that dome is. So I'm really pleased with that. When we look at the front of the tender that we need to still do a little bit of work on clearing up where these panels were. So we've now made a 1G into a 1 tender, a BR1. Uh, really simple, easy conversion. And that's got a good part of this makeover done. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy it, please share, subscribe and like.